Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to BW Flight Simulation. We're going to do ourselves a uh, short flight here from Half Moon Bay, where we landed yesterday, and we're going to head up to Pac Sims Reno, Tahoe International Airport. Sit back, relax, enjoy the flight, and we'll get started. System test OK. Alright, so we'll go ahead. There's no ATC on, so that's why I put up to 21,000 feet. Uh, we'll go into, uh, let's go back to procedures. There's no departure procedures out of here, so we won't worry about that. Uh, so basically, we'll just go to flight plan. We'll add Woodside VOR. From, from Woodside, we'll go direct to Sacramento VOR. And from there, it's going to be Reno. Reno Tahoe International. We'll load a procedure. We'll do the arrival, which is going to be the Sierra 3 arrival. And let's see, all runway, that's fine. Sacramento transition, we'll load it. Their landing runway is one six. Actually, their landing runway is three four. That would have been Tarver. So you know what? That's wrong. Sierra is if they're landing north. I mean, landing south. <coughs> so actually, that flight plan is wrong. Sierra 3. Yeah, that's if we were landing uh, landing to the south. We're landing, they're landing north. Should be should should be Tarver. So this is what we're gonna do here. We're gonna remove. Actually, we just go like this. Remove, and then we'll go to load procedure. The arrival. It's actually Tarver. And we'll take it from Sacramento. It's still all runways, which is fine. We'll load it. Go back to Reno. Load procedure. And it's going to be 3-4 left. And we'll take it from Spoon. We'll click that. We'll come out here. We'll turn off the terrain. There's no need for the terrain. Let's kind of look at it. There's Woodside, Sacramento, Tarver, and then the airport. So we'll use that. So that's good. There's no ATC on. I'm just going to put one in here anyways. We'll enter it. I can drop it down here. Let me go back into the flight plan. And I'm going to say Sacramento Tarver 1. File that again. Uh, double check the weather in Reno again. Let's just see. Yeah, it's landing north. Alright, we got that set. We'll go ahead and get the door closed. We'll go outside and look around really quick. Door's closing up. Everything looks good there. Go ahead and with the 
Let's put on the beacon light. Beacon light's coming on, passenger safety goes on. Throttles are down. We'll set trim to take off. Go ahead and disengage it first. Let's make sure there's in the up position, down position, up, down, okay. I'll go ahead and start the right. Right spooling up. There's the right side. It should be about 96. Alright, let's hit the left. There's the left startup. AC power can come on, generator left and right can come on. We'll get the lights going here. We'll go ahead and disconnect the uh, ground power unit now, it's no longer needed. Flap set for takeoff, we can double check that and make sure that's correct. We can turn the air on, this goes to auto. Fan comes on. Windshield bleed comes on. That is set. Altitude's flight level 210. We can bring that down. Right there looks good. Alright, so we've got that set. Let's go outside view one more time. Let's trust the uh, thrust reversers out. Uh, thrust reversers work. Speed brake. Speed brake works. Go ahead and sync the heading because it's already set to where we're pretty much runway heading. Alright, we can start our taxi out to runway 30. Now we can close this out. We can throw in there a little bit Path Moon Bay. Uh, basically got to flip it around the only thing we have left to do is turn on the pedostatic heat and do our uh, lights as required we can actually look at this too. This will help us on our taxi as well. A little bit of overcast today here at Half Moon Bay. It was actually nicer yesterday. Coming in here. This will work. It's only about a 48 minute flight so it's kind of up and back down again really quick. I guess this next taxiway coming up here. I just do a quick flight where I have a little bit of break in between work. This should be the taxiway right here. That's what it looks like it is. And on departure of Half Moon Bay, we'll do a left turnout. A lot of people make this mistake of doing a right turnout. I don't know why you'd want to turn into the hills. I'd rather turn away from the hills than into them. So it'll be a left turnout on departure. We'll fly it over the water and then uh, fly direct to uh, the Woodside VOR. And then from Woodside, we'll start climbing up to our final altitude 210. And hopefully not have any traffic.
coming to the end of the runway here. I'll turn on the pedostatic heater comes on. Um, start slowing down a little bit here. Come down here to the lights. We'll go recognition. Anti-collision can come on. Uh, taxiway lights. All right. That's the end of the runway up ahead of us. Continue our taxi. come up here line up on the runway there's no traffic coming in here I mean who's gonna come in here everybody has to be actually working luckily I don't have to worry about that we we'll get lined up stop it right here All right, five level two one zero it's gonna be a left turn out runway heading set alright we can do it let's do it Engines are spawning up, full power. Brakes released. Airspeed's alive. There's 80 knots. Rotate. Positive climb, gears coming up. Four hundred feet, flaps will come up. There's four hundred feet, flaps can come up. Left turn out. Keep an eye on the speed. Autopilot yaw damp, altitude select. Heading uh, IAS mode. And we'll go back to flight plan. Let's go direct Woodside VOR. Or in the turn direct Woodside. We're 220 indicated airspeed mode. Auto autopilot yaw dampers on. We can go ahead and turn off our landing lights, since you can't see them anyways. We'll go ahead and go to fan sync. Three hundred sixty-four was our filed indicated airspeed ground speed for this trip. We're climbing really good. Heading sync. So we're direct Woodside, and from Woodside it's a sharp left turn direct Sacramento, so hopefully we can be above the inbound San Francisco traffic, which we should be. Take a quick look outside. Overcast weather. It's always like that on the coast. During the summertime too. It's really foggy. We're not going to be able to see anything. You can just see barely through the clouds there. San Francisco is over, back over in here. You're not going to be able to see it. Okay, we're just coming up almost out of 9,000 feet for 210. 
We're getting ready to make our turn over the Woodside VOR. So 015 is the heading. We'll throw 015 in the heading here. Sync it up. There's an auto gen load right there. Okay, 10,000 feet. We can get rid of the rest of our lights that we no longer need. Recognition lights can come off. Passenger safety can come off. And that's about it. And we'll just keep a traffic, uh, just a look out for traffic. We can go to our chart now and look to see where we're at here. So we see just right over the Woodside VOR, we're heading up towards Sacramento. And also see, you know, that's by, let's see if there's anybody around our area that we're going to have to worry about. No, we got nobody. So we're good. So now we're, we're way above the inbound traffic that would be coming into San Francisco and Oakland. The only traffic we'd have to worry about, if there was any, would be anything going into Santa Rosa, Napa area. And that's pretty much over the Oakland area that come through this way. It's the only traffic we'd have to worry about. It's a cloudy, foggy day. There's the San Francisco airport. You can see the two eights there. The San Mateo Bridge is right here. This is San Mateo. So you've got the city of San Mateo here. You got Burlingame, which is part of the SFO airport. And then you got South San Francisco, and then San Francisco's up here. Oakland Airport, you can see the runway 30 right here. Right here in front of us is Mount Diablo. That's actually a state park. My Mount Diablo State Park. I'm trying to see if they have it as a reporting point. It doesn't look like it is. back out the windows. So yep, yeah, there's Oakland Airport there, Mount, Mount Diablo. Uh, Livermore Airport is back over in here. Hayward is going to be right below us. There it is, San Francisco pulling in there, drawing in. San Francisco flight beam. SFO flight beam there. Uh, let's see, can you see... Uh, you can't really see it, so the Golden Gate Bridge just connects right here, and the uh, Bay Bridge is right here. That's the old Alameda Air Station. Okay, at 18,000 feet, everything goes to standard. 2992-1013 set. We'll bring back up the GTN so we can see where we're at.
let's see if we can see uh, so there's Livermore right there this is Highway 580 it's a major interstate, Interstate 580 uh, back over in here whoa there it goes, it's loading there's Hayward, uh, it's, I'm sorry that's Oakland runways threw me off, that's Hayward Airport right there and there's looking back so we came out of Half Moon Bay which is back over in here alright so we're level off here at flight level 210 and we're looking for 300 and what I filed, 364 true is what we're looking for pull up the charts for Reno the Tarver arrival Tarver Tarver where are you Tarver right there so Tarver's at 16,000 so we'll put that into the uh, trusty GTN 750 here I'll we'll go to VCALC and do that this is 16,000 feet. Oops. Let's backspace that. 16,000. Enter. Vertical speed. That's fine. That's fine. And we want to do that at Tarver. Looks like about, uh, about 19 minutes or so we'll start that. So now we'll just keep an eye so we don't overspeed here. And this is the way it actually really is outside today. I've got clouds outside. Looking out my, my window here outside, it is partly cloudy here in Sacramento. So it's, this is pulling in the real weather through active sky and using Rex environment. Uh, the weather at Reno is going to change here in just a bit. Uh, winds are reporting 34011, 10 miles visibility, few clouds at 3,000. Broken at 45, overcast 8,000. And the temperature is 132.03, altimeter was 2987. I think my next flight, don't think I'm going to be able to do it today, but I think my next flight, I might not even be able to do it again until next week. Well, I might be able to do it this weekend. I got a lot of stuff to do, but I want to fly into uh, Drew Whiskey's uh, Chicago area. I've got the city and the airports, so I want to go check that out, fly into Powaukee, and see how that GA airport looks like. From what I saw yes, yesterday, was it yesterday, the day before, I was messing with it, kind of slewing around. Um, it looks really promising, looks really nice. Chilly Willy, what's up my friend? How are you doing? I know you're getting ready for the old uh, FS Expo there in Orlando. That's coming up real soon. Wish I was going this year, but unfortunately got too much stuff going on. I got uh, a lot of money I've got to put out this year. Daughter's graduating high school. 
and then we're gonna all go on a family vacation on a cruise we're trying to plan that so for her graduation but uh, I've been wa I was watching your stream yesterday you flew the uh, 787 into uh, uh, Chicago I saw that you got the uh, double D scenery there I picked that up too I got the city and the uh, on the airports and the airports look really good in my opinion they do yeah yeah I think those 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 black markings you saw on the ground though is what kind of like what they did to our streets out here so if there's any kind of cracks they put some kind of like ceiling over the cracks and I think that's what that is it's that black sealant that they use on the concrete or on the uh, pavement to seal cracks oh the ILS is not working huh I, w I wonder if uh, I wonder if they know that I haven't got to fly in there yet I was gonna uh, do a flight from Vegas in the citation here to Powaukee and check out Powaukee in, in Midway I'm kind of a uh, biz jet nerd I guess you can say since I work with biz jets it's kind of my I like business jets I wonder if they have a uh, a form that you can look up. I don't even know how to pronounce the guy's name. Oh, let's just uh, let's see here. Just looking at my other computer here. Not some market. Oh, that's where you can buy it at. What is it? I'm pretty sure they'll come out with a patch. They're pretty good about doing that. Orbex announces partnership with Flight Velocity. Let's see, Drewski. Let's go to the Facebook. I guess they, have, they actually have a Facebook page here. Just kind of writing, reading through their Facebook page here. See if anybody said anything yet. No. <laughs> no, see anything yet. I've had to know about it though because uh, people are complaining about it or p not complain but you know kind of sent them a heads up hey this is not working right are we flying over my home yet where are we at yeah we're just right over the top of my house I can see the planes that fly overhead that are going out toward Europe um, out to the east coast they come over my house let's see if I can find where I'm at here so there's executive airport Elk Grove there's my city right there that's where I live
let's see here products for P3D Chicago airports some people are reporting that the airport lights are not coming on at night at all three airports Thank you, Lady Flyer. Greatly appreciate it. Everybody say thank you for Lady Flyer coming in hot once again today. Greatly appreciate it, Lady Flyer, as always. You know that. Everybody's coming in. The tier one subs from uh, Lady Flyer. Thank you so much, Lady Flyer. Greatly appreciate it, hon. Alright, let's see how we're doing out here. There's Mather. I don't even think we can see anything because it is, it is cloudy. Like, it really is cloudy here today. It's nah. Look at that. Everybody coming in from Lady Flyer. Everybody's getting a tier one sub. sure I didn't forget to do anything here. No, I didn't. So we've used 735 pounds. There's the Sierras are starting to come in now. Chili Willie's coming in with the Tier 1 sub from Lady Flyer. Thank you, Lady Flyer. Greatly appreciate it, as always. You are the bomb. So they're saying, I guess the, the lights, I didn't know this, but I guess the lights at some of these airports uh, that the developers make are SOTI driven. And they come on, of course, when it starts to get dark outside. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that they can do that with SOTI. You learn something new every day. Chili Willies, just look at that. Chili Willies, there it is. There's his tier one. But that's interesting. I did not know that. I know they can use Sodi uh, for like the uh, wind socks, the wind sock effect. On some of these sceneries, you can, um, they can use that for the Sodi. So that's pretty cool that it, it does more than just jetways. All right, so there is there is some stuff in the uh, in their forums talking about uh, the aircraft not detecting the ILS runway 28 center signal. Some jetways are not working for some people, so it looks like they do know about it. So obviously they'll be out with the patch. Growl, what's up, my buddy? How you doing, man? Welcome, welcome. We got the whole we got the whole group in here, man. Whole groups here. There's the Sierras coming in. Let's go back here and see what V Calc says for us. Just uh, under seven minutes until we start down. Remember, we're only at uh, 20 fight level 210. So uh, Grau's coming in with the host. Thank you so much. We're only uh, going to need to descend 5,000 feet. Uh, we need to ca cross Tarver at 16. That's a short flight. It's only a 48-minute flight from Half Moon Bay to Reno. So it's pretty much up and down. And as you all know, there is uh, no ATC on Vatsim, unfortunately. As, li as, as Lady Flyer would say, you should know that by now. Or well, that's typical. I do, I do miss uh, Pilot Edge at times. I do miss Pilot Edge at times. The only thing uh, Pilot Edge is missing now, which which was fun, is when AJ was on there, but he's no longer there. So 
Marcus is still a good controller. He's he's still there. Alright, so we're almost uh, coming to our top of descent here soon. We'll go do another outside view. We're not going to be able to see anything anyways because of the cloud cover. I thought this was supposed to be springtime. It's supposed to be nice out. We've had rain the last couple of days, which kind of sucks because I just found out I have a leak in my roof. But they can't do anything until the roof dries up to even do any kind of work. And once it dries, it'll show where the stain is coming from and where the leak is coming from. So luckily it's not my room, it's not my daughter's room, it's in my son's room. So luckily we know uh, we, we know a local contractor. He actually painted our house for us, so we're going to use him again. Hopefully get our uh, leak fixed. I tell you what, owning a house has got its pluses and it's got its minuses. That's for sure. And it's looking good. Nice and smooth. Alright, let's see. Let's bring up the GTN out here. Look at that. GTN's flying outside with the plane. Let's see how far we got to go. About four minutes. So basically, it's going to start us down here in just a bit. And we're going to cross Tarver at 16. Spoon's at 10. Uh, let's check the weather one more time here and see what we're doing in Reno before we start down. Oh, great. Look at that. So the winds have picked up in Reno now. We've got winds are 330 at 13, gusting to 20. Uh, 10 miles visibility. A uh, few clouds at 3800, scattered at 6, broken at 9. Temperatures 1.5, dew point zero three. The altimeter is still 2987. So the clouds have kind of moved up a little bit. Before, the, it was few 3,000, and then broken at 4,500, and overcast was at 8,000. So it's changed a little bit, and the winds have picked up. So this, this should be a, another fun approach here. So let's go over to our trusty Navigraph charts here. And you can see that we're on the arrival from Sacramento heading towards Tarver. We're going to take the uh, ILS approach to runway 34 left. It's ILS or localizer DME 34 left, however you want to look at it. And that spoon, we're supposed to be at spoon at 10,500. So 344 is our speed. We'll go ahead and switch that over to the ILS. OBS is 344. We'll enter that in there like that. No, not yet. GPS, not yet. Let's back it up. Flight plan. Direct. Not yet. There's uh, Tahoe. Lake Tahoe is right there. Not supposed to do that just yet. Kind of jumped the gun there. Okay, altitude is 16,000. We'll get a warning here. Let us know it's time to start our descent. And obviously, it's going to be cloudy all the way in. It looks like. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my recognition lights because if I don't, I'll forget them. All right, girl. Let's bring the throttles back a little bit, slow it up here. I'm pretty sure we're like either two minutes or less than a minute here. Yeah. There's our message to let us know. We'll go ahead and hit uh, altitude select. Uh, 2,000 feet a minute. 
what we'll bring it down to, we'll go ahead and clear the message. Bring back the throttle so we don't overspeed. Go back to the charts, look at the charts again. So 344 is the final approach, car is heading 109.9 .9 is set. Let's dial in the Mustang VOR at Now we're just coming out of 18.7. We get past 18,000 feet. We'll set the altimeter to 9 or 8.7. Uh, 2987. Just looking at the uh, make sure the weather you know matches up. 2987.1012. Okay, there we go. There. Let's just zoom in here so I can see what it says here. 2992. It's going to be one zero. 2987 is set 1012. There we go. Now we're coming through it. Once it says we're going to make the turn, I'll go to approach mode. I'll put in the OBS heading. This will change to VCAL or VLOC. Speed's about 220, we'll keep about 220, 230. We're level at 16, it's perfect. Next altitude is 10,000. Actually, 10,500. Okay, it's going to be a left at 347, so what we're going to do is we're going to go OBS now, 344. Enter that in. VLOC, approach mode, arm it. Uh, actually, this should go into VOR1. 344 on here. All right, we're going to start. We're going to turn the heading here. Make sure it catches it captures it. So it's starting to make its turn here. I'm going to pass the waypoint a little bit here, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and start down now. Go flaps one.
So we're going to recapture the uh, localizer here. We'll put the heading as 344. What it's doing is correcting to capture it. Just coming through the soup. We're about 2,000 feet a minute, exactly what we want. We'll watch it capture. There it go, it's moving. Start bringing the speed back. You can see it capturing the localizer as well on the GTN. Okay, spoons at 10,500. We'll go back, look at the chart one more time here. Uh, spoon in the 9400 at Waggy, 8300, 6800. So I'll look at, I'll look for 94 at Waggy, and then 8300 after Waggy. We're on the loke. The approach is captured. Minden Airport's out here somewhere. I don't think we're going to be able to to see it it's directly kind of right below us so that's not going to, we're not going to be able to see it the only time I've ever flown into Reno in real life is we always live landed south Every time I've ever flown in Reno, it's always south landing. I've never landed in real life north. It'd actually be a pretty cool approach to see. So we've captured the uh, localizer, and now we're looking for the glide slope. At this point, we're down to 9400, so we'll go ahead and set that in the altitude here. As we get just before spoon, we'll start down again. Side by SJMO. I do not fly in real life. Uh, I've worked around a whole bunch of them. I'm, uh, I work in corporate aviation as a uh, what they call a dispatch slash flight coordinator. I work with a uh, G550 and a King Air 200 GT. Chris, what's up, man? What's happening, brother? Welcome. Uh, so I've worked around uh, biz jets for a long, long, long time. Probably little over 20 years. I got a lot of friends in Flyam and whatnot, but right now I currently work with the G550, soon to be, I just found out a couple days ago, within a month or two working with the 650. All right, so there's Spoon, altitude, and let's start down. So that's gonna be really cool. Side by SJMO, thanks so much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I fly, I fly kites for a living. That's true. Yes, I do. Oh, the Global, yeah. The, even, the, the 7500, 7, the new one, that's going to give the 650 some uh, competition there. And you're looking at the, uh, the 7500, it is just freaking crazy long. Let's see how we're doing here. Seems like we're a little off, doesn't it? The way this thing has me, I'm, lo I'm like off to the left, but it's showing I'm on the localizer. That's kind of weird. There's 9400. 
I'm a little low here, that's fine. But I got a feeling, I don't know, it's just weird. It, it, either it's the GTN that's off, or the SIM that's off. Oh, nice, you fly a twin in the Caribbean, very cool. You do all the uh, island hopping then? Uh, have you been into, uh, what is it, uh, St. Martin? Love that airport. Maho Beach. I got to go there years back, and I did one of the stupidest things I've ever done. And I don't care, I'm proud of it. I don't care how bad it hurt. I stood behind a, uh, an A340, Air France A340, stood behind that thing on takeoff. I was on the beach, though. I didn't, I didn't do it from the, the fence. I'm not that stupid. And, um, yeah, I got blown into the water by the A340. That was freaking pretty cool. All right, so 8300. Oh, so you, oh, St. Bart's, nice. Beautiful islands, beautiful islands. Challenging airports, too. All right, there's Reno, downtown Reno. Now let's see if we're lined up. It shows I should be over here. This is really weird. Yeah, you, you got to go there and do it once just to say you've done it. I'm thinking, that I think I'm off. I think that either the SIM is off or the GTN is off. The air doesn't look right. Yep, she's the one. She She's the one. Something doesn't look right. There's the airport. It is off. All right, my plane. I knew it didn't look right. Go ahead and turn off the yaw damper. I'll go flaps to two. Gears coming down. I knew something didn't look right. One notch of flaps to go. Recognition's on. Let's go ahead and put the landing lights on. That guy's going into San Francisco. We might even do the, we might just take uh, three, four right. Yeah. Side by SJMO, Lady Flyer is the bomb. She, she takes care of people. She takes care of people. Everybody talks about her, how awesome she is. All right, we're doing this visual here. I've got three, four left, three, four right in sight. So that's weird. The GTN, either the GTN or the sim, or it's the scenery, has set me off to the left-hand side of the localizer. That's weird. We're going to shoot for three, four right since the FBO is right there on the right hand side. Yeah, that is the, G it's um, actually it's Reality XP's uh, GTN 750. I have both, but I like the uh, Reality XP's GTN 750. If, if you want the GTN, get the Reality XP. I think it's better. I have the GTN 750, uh, the Flight 1. It's all right. But when I switched over to the Reality XP one, and they come out with updates a lot faster, too. Yeah, I have Navigraph subscription. Uh, luckily, I'm able to get the real nav data for the GTN 750 from uh, a plane I used to work with. They share it with me. So, uh, why do I think it's better bet uh, between the Flight 1 and the Reality XP 1? Reality XP comes out with the updates a lot faster than Flight 1. 
So if PMDG updates, or not PMDG, P3D updates, you only have to wait a day or two compared to flight one where you might have to wait weeks. And it does have more functionality as well, yes. On, the, on this one, the Reality XP, you have the choices between VNAV and VCalc. And I prefer using the VCalc. Last notch of flaps coming in. A little high. The FBO is back, is right here. So I fl hand flew that thing all the way in. Perfect. We're a little slow. Yeah, Real XP is a lot better on their updates. Okay, we're down. There's six lights. Thrust reversers in. 57, not bad. Yeah, it's, it, I had to take it over manually because I was way off. And I got to find out if it's, this, if it's the scenery or it's something that had me off. I don't know. So we'll pull off right here at the next taxiway. Okay. Flaps are coming up. That was a fun flight. That was a real fun flight. Luckily, I was able to fly visually to the airport. I didn't have to real, uh, rely on the ILS. Yes, the Reno Airport. We'll park here and take a look at it. If those that don't have the Reno Airport, we'll park and check it out. It is very nice. Uh, Reno is uh, done by Paxim. And also, um, their Salt Lake City Airport is really good. I don't know if anybody else wants to see what Reno looks like. If you do, let me know. If you don't, then let me know you don't want to see it as well. Uh, but for those of you who haven't seen it, I can I can park here and we can do like a stroll around the airport real quick. If you don't have it or thinking about getting it. But uh, we're going to pull up to Atlantic here, get some front door service. We're going to call it good right here by the, the hangar. All right, into the cockpit we go. We're going to go ahead and turn off our pitot static so we don't burn it up. anti all services can come off. Come off there. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and put on the parking brake now. We can turn off these lights. We don't need these lights on anymore. That's good. Turn off our AC power. Uh, we're not going to get any ground power, so I'm not going to worry about that. The bleeds can come off. Air conditioning can come off. Oops, let's move the yoke out of the way here. I can turn that off now. This can come off. That can come off. That should have come off on approach. I forgot to do that. Landing lights can come off. Beacon has to stay on until I get the engines off, which we'll do now. The left's coming off, the right's coming off. All right, pedo statics off, anti ass for all services, that's fine. We can turn off the gens now. Gens can come off. Avionic power, uh, let's take one more look to make sure everything we got off that we need off. Da -da 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 -da. We can set, this is set to ground, so that's fine. And we can go ahead and shut off the battery power. Boom. Let's get the door open. Look at outside. Boom. Welcome to Reno, everybody. I uh, hope uh, everybody enjoyed that. That was a really good landing. I'm proud of that landing. Minus 57. Side by SJMO. Thanks so far. Thanks. Thanks so much. Lady Flyer gifted you a, uh, a a sub there. Tier one sub. Thank you so much, Lady Flyer, for that. Appreciate it. Let's see, uh, you're doing a flight in the ATR-42 from uh, St. Martin to Curaçao, Curaçao, 
but I have no idea if my power settings and stuff are correct. Ah, gotcha. That's a long flight, isn't it? Was that a little over an hour? Maybe an hour and a half flight? That's a, that's a, pre that's a pretty good flight right there. So, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll just do, let's see, what GTN do you have? I have the Reality XP GTN. Uh, I can turn it back on so you guys can take a look at it. Let's just put the power back on. Who cares, right? Let's get it back on. And I'll hook up ground power so it doesn't, uh, doesn't go out. In order to do that, there we go. So this is Reality XP. And like I said, uh, luckily enough, I'm able to get the real uh, nav data. It's kind of a pain in the ass to install. Uh, but I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to get my hands on it for how long, I don't know. But uh, I try to update as much as I can. But this is the Reality XP uh, GTN uh, 750. And I was, as I was telling uh, side by SJMO there, it's better, in my opinion, it's better than the Flight 1 GTN because they're on top of whenever P3D does updates, they're on top of their patches. You, the longest I think I've had to wait from Reality XP was maybe four or five days. That's the longest. Usually it's out in one to two days. Uh, Flight 1 could take weeks. I don't know if they're just not on top of on top of their GTN 750 or what it is, but Reality XP is the best in my opinion. And there's a there's a lot more to it that you can uh, do, especially um, setting it up. Let's see if I can remember how to do it here. Of course, when I want to do it here, that's the Mustang VOR. Let's um let's bring it down here. Let's see if this is it. There's a way to bring up the menu. There it is. So here's the menu for the GTN 750, and this is the Reality XP uh, menu for the GTN 750. You don't get this with the Flight 1 GTN 750. It's a separate, it's a whole different program that they use in order to set it up. On a twin R, so I want to get the more realistic one. I yeah. Yep, I wanted to have start flying streaming flight stuff so for a while too, but I don't think internet will allow me. Oh, uh, the internet. I just I have Xfinity, which is Comcast, and I just went to unlimited. I paid an extra fifty bucks a month so I can go unlimited for because I stream so much. So luckily I did that. But this is their um, this is their menu, and you can change things in here. I kind of left uh, pretty much everything like it is. Uh, Worldwide Jepson database. I use Twas B. Uh, you can change the uh, voices in there. You can change what the minimum length runway that you want. Do you want it hard or soft runways? Uh, water only. Any surfaces. So whatever kind of plane that you're flying, you can change that all in there. Uh, you can change the radios. I didn't. The only thing I changed in this was Jet. I went to Jet A. You have your choices in there, what you want to use. But I used Jet A, and then I did with the uh, the business jet, which kind of gives you the business jet icon. I left all the rest of the stuff alone. Uh, audio settings, I used a female voice. You can use a male voice. I like to hear the female. Taz system, okay. So I went and did that and changed that. Um, advanced in here. You have a choice between using the uh, vertical navigation V calc, or you can go to V nav. I'm still trying to figure out how V nav actually works in the GTN 750. I haven't figured that out yet, and how it couples to the or any one of your, any planes that you fly. So I'm still trying to figure that out. So I use V calc and it works. But um, and you can check for updates and it'll tell you that you've got the latest latest and greatest installed which is nice. That with the GTN 750 from Flight 1, you don't get that. You have to continually ch check the website. So, that is what I've got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed the flight. I appreciate the uh, the follows. Uh, Lady Flyer coming in with all the subs as always. She's the bomb. Very, very generous person. Greatly appreciate her. Uh, thanks for everybody for stopping by. 
I might be able to do a flight later on today. We'll see how it goes. I got to finish up some work here. My G550 is getting ready to go to the East Coast, and I got to I got to fix up some more stuff for it. And then I have a second job that I help another charter company out. I got to find some charters for uh, for them. I got to help them out. So I uh, appreciate you guys stopping by. Thanks thanks again, everybody. I appreciate it. Look for you guys uh, on the next stream. Everybody take care. Peace out. B-dubs out. See you guys on the next one.